Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today the lecture will be very, well, non-theoretical. I'll just talk about certain devices which are used to generate electricity. Um, so no mathematics, mm, almost, except in the very beginning I'll just uh, recall one particular formula. Well, anyway, this is uh, a continuation of uh, the uh, chapter of this course called uh, Electromagnetism. Well, the course is called Physics 14. It's presented on unizor.com. Um, I, I suggest you to watch basically the whole course from the website, not just one individual lecture which you might be interested in. Um, and uh, now this course has a prerequisite, Mass 14, on the same website. and. Uh, well, this lecture is an exception. There is no mass, or almost no mass here. Um, but most of the other lectures, which are related to physics, any kind of physical um, uh, aspects, um, they do have mass. So you really have to be proficient in your calculus, your vector algebra, and something else. OK, so we were talking before about theoretical aspects of electromagnetism. Um, well, electricity in particular, it's kind of a more, it, it's a heavier part of electromagnetism um, because we're using electricity everywhere in our, in our houses, in our, um, in, in, in industry, etc. So today I will talk about very practical aspect. How do we uh, obtain electricity? How do we generate electricity? Okay, there are certain different ways. Electricity is energy and to have an energy we have to take some other energy and convert it. Now in this particular lecture I will talk about kinetic energy converted into electric energy, into electricity. The next lectures will be dedicated to some using uh, some kind of chemical energy or uh, some light energy etc. But this is about kinetic energy converted into um, electricity. So, the most important, um, well, theoretical aspects um, of converging certain other energies, well, kinetic energy in this particular case, into electricity um, is, well, the magnetic induction. Well, we all know the formula that electromotive force can be generated in, well, let's say if you have some kind of a um, frame and if you have um, magnetic field, variable magnetic field, in such a way that magnetic flux which is going through this frame is changing then the changing of magnetic flux actually the rate of changing of magnetic flux is basically equal to um, generated electromotive force in this uh, wireframe and this is the principle on which all um, electric generators are built so we have to somehow generate variable um, magnetic field so magnetic flux will change. The way how we usually achieve it in generators and we were actually discussing this before we either rotate uh, the uh, wireframe in the magnetic field or we keep the wireframe um, uh, stationary and we rotate the magnetic field by rotating basically magnet inside um, the, the the wireframe. Now obviously it's not just one wireframe that many many different loops and uh, that's how basically electric generator is organized. So we have to have a rotation. So that's what's the most important part when we are um, generating electricity from kinetic energy our kinetic energy must be somehow converted into rotation and that's the easier 
and that's the most practical way of generating electricity from the kinetic energy. So, what kind of rotation we have, which we can use um, to generate electricity? Well, to rotate the rotor inside the electric generator, which will generate electricity. So, this lecture is about rotation, basically. How can we get rotation? Okay. Now, there are certain um, very simple devices which go back to the time immemorial, which can be used to achieve rotation using something which we already have in our possession in nature. Well, we have the flow of water um, flowing uh, in a river. Well, that was the first source of energy which people uh, could use to generate a rotation. Well, they were doing something like pumping the water from, from one place to another using the mills, for instance, okay? So that's one of the things. Well, contemporary way of using the flow of water or the flow of wind, because they are similar in the way how we use these, is a propeller. So everybody knows what propeller actually is, right? So it has, this is the axis, and it has certain, um, I don't know, wings or whatever else, which are turned at certain angle. So if you have a flow of water or flow of wind, as soon as they hit the surface of one particular um, wing of this propeller, since the wing is at the angle, so what happens is, if this is the flow of um, uh, wind or, 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 or water, and this is the way how my plane actually, which goes against this, is, um, is positioned at certain angle. Well, since there is an angle, there will be, uh, well, if you will actually represent the force as a combination of different force, because you have a surface, if you have a surface of this wing, then the force goes this way, right? So it has two different components, the vertical component and horizontal component. Vertical component actually is a pressure on the axis, on this axis, and horizontal component will be rotating the, uh, the propeller. So this is a very simple thing. The propellers were used, again, as I'm saying, from the time immemorial. And this is the way how we generate rotation from the flow of water or the wind. So, that's in case we already have the water and the wind. Well, it's not always like that, and energy is needed everywhere. It's not like in every place we have some kind of water which we can use. And don't forget that to have this particular um, thing generated a substantial amount of power, we really have to do something. Well, the Hoover Dam, if, 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 if you know, is basically cutting off the water flow and um, it has a dam and the water actually raises so now this is the level of water this is our dam, this is the Hoover Dam and then as soon as it reaches certain height, then it goes, it flows from here down. As it goes down, it's much more pressure than if you're just, you know, using the flow of water. Now, this is the falling water. That's where Niagara Fall, for instance, is. I mean, the falling water has significantly more kinetic energy by using gravitation, the gravity of the Earth. So the falling water has more kinetic energy than just flowing along the river. And now here we can have this propeller and it's circulating because the flowing water going on the wings 
of the propeller will turn it around and that's where we get this rotation with wind also i mean yes it's it's good if there is a good wind but it might be or it might not be so natural and by the way this type of hydroelectric station hydroelectric power plants well it has its own drawbacks as well because since we are actually have to do something like put the dam and the river goes up which means it floods a lot of area around it and it might or might not be good thing for for the nature we're trying not to to to, to, distur to disturb the nature as much as possible this type of a hydroelectric station is very intrusive to nature well the wind um, the power plants which are built on the wind flow also are kind of intrusive well first of all they take a lot of space because they, they are big actually and there are many many different propellers installed on the um, uh, uh, installed re relatively high in the air and there are birds actually which are getting hurt etc so there are negative things and it's not always flowing the, the, the wind is not always um, uh, flowing so um, okay so we need something a little bit more I would say reliable but again there is no ideal thing for, for every kind of device which we are using to generate electricity well it, it, it is intrusive in some way or another against the nature but we are basically doing whatever we can to to try to be good to nature but at the same time you know so the next thing is well we can produce artificial flow of something that's where the thermal uh, power point um, go now the thermal power point usually generates steam from water using some kind of a heating mechanism now as soon as you generate the steam from the water well the more steam you generate you can have more power basically it's very simple okay so what usually is used for the source of the heat is well it used to be coal then oil then natural gas um, these are burning basically and they're converting water into a steam and the steam is directed towards the same propeller which we were talking about in this case it's not just a propeller it's called a turbine now a turbine is actually on a, uh, you, you have coaxial propellers of different kinds uh, so the, uh, the flow of steam goes this way and it rotates all these propellers coaxial, uh, coaxial uh, propellers now why do we need many of them well because as soon as the steam hits one of those things um, it basically reflected and it has certain other energy in a reflected uh, flow of steam and it can be used as well that's why we have different shapes of different propellers so that uh, somehow they're trying to use as much energy extract as much energy from the flow of steam as possible and um, on the website um, in the notes for for this lecture and every lecture has a notes i have a couple of pictures one of them is a picture of a propeller and another is a picture of a turbine which basically contains a lot of different propellers installed on the same um, uh, axis. So, um, what other um, uh, energy source to generate um, the steam? So, basically, what other heat energy which we which, which can use? I mentioned um, oil, coal, natural gas, obviously nuclear station. <coughs> It, it sounds very scientifically like nuclear station well it does have something to do with nuclear physics however the final product of nuclear power station is just heat and it's just heating the the water to produce steam and the steam goes against the propellers and against the turbine to basically generate electricity so um, what else um, yes there is a source like volcano for instance volcano is a geothermal uh, source and there are some um, 
uh, electric uh, power stations which generate this um, energy which is inside our planet um, quite frankly I don't know how it's done I mean obviously it's not against the some real volcano but there is a heat which is generated in in, in any f in even the old volcano and that heat somehow m might be might be used to generate um, the steam to produce the steam from water uh, that's basically it about um, having these rotational movement movements generated from either natural or artificial flow of some substance and the propeller so it's all based on using the propellers um, in different kind of uh, devices usually called turbines now in um, in the car engine we have a different way of generating um, rotational movement the car engine is um, I'm talking about internal combustion not about electrical electrical cars they are they have batteries and they generate basically um, directly um, the rotational movement which is a very very simple thing um, the electric cars are extremely simple in their construction the problem is the batteries but that's besides the point we're not talking about this right now we'll talk about when we'll use the chemical energy as a source of rotation as a source of electricity but in this case we're talking about mechanical um, uh, usage and um, in the car we have internal combustion engine so what is internal combustion engine well basically it's a very simple thing you have some kind of a camera and you have a piston so there is fuel and, and, uh, and, and air or whatever coming into this spark and then it moves the piston up so that's it then something we move it down again and then again we um, uh, uh, pump in some kind of a gaseous um, uh, um, thing which can be again sparkle and uh, and it will move it up and down so basically that's what we have we have up and down movement of the piston in the car engine it's called reciprocal movement it goes up and down up and down and somehow we have to use this up and down movement to create rotation and this is done using again a relatively simple mechanical device so the way how it's done is the following so this is my piston which goes up and down now this is called connecting bar and then here we have something which is called um, crankshaft so um, the um, crankshaft is something like this now um, it's not really a um, hard connection there is a rotation mechanism here um, and uh, so whenever and this thing uh, this thing also is rotating so as this thing is moving up and down this thing is rotating and since this is not a hard connection but uh, basically a flexible connection um, uh, up and down reciprocal movement of of the piston is converted into rotation of this axis and from this rotation we can go everywhere else we can go to to the wheels to basically make them rotate and we can go to um, the generator which generates electricity so <coughs> the purpose of this lecture actually a very simple lecture is just to remind you about this formula that all we need is a rotation if you have a rotation then using the magnet and the frame we can have this um, generator of uh, electricity and generation and, and generation of uh, pr well producing a rotational movement not generation producing a rotational movement 
can be done in many different ways. And that's what I was trying to present today. If you already have some movement, some kinetic motion, this kinetic uh, energy which is in this motion can be converted in different ways um, into rotation. So we have certain natural um, motion, like rivers or uh, falling water in the waterfalls or the wind. So we can use the propellers. We can artificially create movement of some substance, like steam, for instance, and use this movement of the steam, which we generate using the heat, uh, against the turbine to, 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 to generate rotational movement. Um, or we can use the reciprocal movement in the uh, internal combustion engine um, to convert it using this um, device uh, into rotation. So these are obviously not all the possible ways to convert kinetic energy into electric energy, but it's just one of the major probable ones, and that was the subject of this lecture. So again, this is how we are connecting kinetic energy, which we already have somehow somehow else we are obtaining kinetic energy, natural way or we are artificially created, etc. How to convert kinetic um, energy into um, electricity using rotation. That, that's basically it. In the next lectures we will talk about other ways not related to these purely mechanical devices or, and uh, uh, electrical generator and this type of a basic formula, magnetic induction. So we will talk about different ways to generate electricity. Now, what do, you mean, what, what do I mean generate electricity? Well, to separate electrons from, uh, from, from their hosts, from their atoms where they were located, thereby creating the difference in potential. So there are different ways to do it. One way is electrical generator, which is basically using the rotation of the magnetic field. And there are other ways, not only related to magnetic induction. OK, so that would be the subject of the next lectures. And uh, I do suggest you just to read the notes for this lecture. There are some pictures, as I was saying. And uh, I didn't mention it, but the physics of 14 um, is part of this unizor.com. Unizor.com is an educational website where you can find mass routines and some other courses. Uh, the site is completely free and uh, there are no financial strings attached. You don't even have to sign in if you don't want to. But there are some exams uh, on the site. So every lecture has um, uh, accompanying uh, notes for the lecture. And a uh, certain group of lectures usually have exams. So you can go with exam and you can take exam as many times as you want until you will get the perfect score. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.